have to, to be successful for a long time, you really have to like what you do. I would not, not be there without her. I know what it takes, how much work it takes yeah. to actually get yourself in shape and to be in this position. If you live in Switzerland, you have to at least be top 10 to have a life after. Don't have any regrets. Martina, thanks for having us today. Thank you. Um, sorry, I won't introduce all your titles because uh, uh, there's so many of them, not enough time for one program. <laughs> but um, by the way, do you still count and remember all of them? Well, I was just uh, surely remember because the last one in doubles was the 60th. Yeah. So <laughs> well in done. a way, in a way, I feel you know, 60 of you would say like, okay, 60 years old, you know, it's like, <laughs> but I feel sometimes like, okay, I'm still a spring chicken on the court. And that's how I feel in doubles when we're doing well. But on a way, like being 36 years old, it's more of a, you know, grandmother on the court. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I think we've done so well now also in the last two years with Sanya Mirza. Now I'm partnering with uh, Leticia Chan and she's uh, you know, a great partner. We had five titles now this year already. So I'm looking forward to the next one. And what about singles? Do you still remember? <laughs> or well, you let Wikipedia do this job? Well, I kind of let them do it, but it's kind of funny enough that you know, and the big events, they uh, keep saying that every time on the match, you know, 43 titles yeah. now, 16 <laughs> in, in double. Right. So, <laughs> so uh, no, I mean, it's, I probably wouldn't know by myself, but if, you know, before every match they introduce you yeah. and they tell you the titles, I'm like, I feel pretty proud. <laughs> <laughs> Incredibly long career uh, and still on the highest level. What is the key? I think I just still have the passion for the game. I love the challenge. I love not always chasing the little ball but yeah. i rather have the other players chase down the ball for me but uh, no i think it's uh, you have to to be successful for a long time you really have to like what you do and i think that's definitely the biggest key to success but how you were able to save the hunger you know for the game well, i had a couple breaks you know i had three years and six years of it that i wasn't doing as much traveling yeah, and the tennis talk about that. yeah because i mean it's not even the tennis that i miss it's the traveling I didn't like so much. I think it was just sometimes really nice to be home and not having the constant pressure of having to win matches and yeah. having the success. When you, especially when you have been number one, you're always like, that's the highest goal. I mean, every time you lose, you're like, oh, that's disappointing. But uh, I think to sometimes put that pressure away and to find that new hunger in, with the game, it's, uh, it's challenging. But that's why I admire players, you know, like Roger Federer. I mean, why is he still playing after having won know. so many titles? Or Serena Williams, the same yeah, question true. you could ask them, right? Yeah. yeah. How far ahead do you plan your schedule today? In another way, how, uh, how long do you want to play? Well, it's my fourth year again, kind of being back um, full on tour. So um, I take it as a bonus every time I say like the last three years have been incredible and I don't really want to set myself a timeline, you know, as long as things go well. Um, yeah. I really enjoy it to be out there. I really just set this season and we'll see where it takes me after that. What do you think has changed in tennis between the time you played singles and now? I think the biggest change is really the technology. I think uh, when you think, when I won here 20 years ago, um, the courts were a lot faster. Now they slowed them down, but the really? rackets and the strings are faster yeah. again. So I think it evens it out yeah. again because, uh, I mean, you still see like Serena was dominating like in the last three, four years. And uh, 20 years ago, I didn't think we made it that easy for her all the time, you know? So, <laughs> but uh, I think there were probably more players that it's brighter, the variety, but the top 10 is very exchangeable, except maybe her, you yeah. know? But um, yeah, I think, you know, Vika Zarenka, who's done so well, or when I played and I had my first break, then the Russian yeah. army has arrived, you know, with Miss Kina winning the yeah. first. Uh, but, yeah, so the first Grand Slam winners, you know, yeah. so it was uh, a really exciting time that, um, you know, from the eastern part of the world that they came and um, they play really great tennis. And um, yeah, so it's uh, it's definitely changed in that case that there is a lot more players who are physically and the nutrition and the fitness yeah. and coaches and everything. I think this has gotten much more professional, but the game itself, I don't think has evolved as much probably really yeah so, i think okay. i don't know i think it used to so be the more speed and everything yeah but movement. it's easy, it's harder with because the speed is there 
I mean, because of the records and the strings, mm -hmm. I would say, it's harder to have variety, obviously, because the ball comes so fast yeah. at you to, to create yeah. drop shots or angles. Yeah. It's not as easy. You have to block the ball first to be able to take that, put that pressure away and then start the rally. But I think it's still possible because also the records, they help you to, to yeah, play a faster game and to adjust to it. So I, I don't think otherwise I would have a chance to be as successful <laughs> in doubles either. You know, you still need the reaction and the space and the vision of the court. I was watching a documentary film about you by ESPN. Mm. You're still a kid there and so naive and uh, shy. Yeah. How you, you were able to, uh, to hold all this pressure by being number one, being so well, famous? Well, because I was like that, probably. A, <laughs> you know, I didn't a, see... I mean, young age. Yeah, I, I think because I saw everything with the blue eyes, you know, like yeah. you see, like no one wants to harm you, no one wants to, you know, I, I didn't really let the pressure get to me as much because I felt I, I had so many years ahead of me. If I didn't succeed today or tomorrow, I felt like, oh yeah, there's 10 years, I have enough time, you know, when you're that young. I but think nowadays like, players don't think like that. Yeah, they but... They're like, today and now. Yeah, because they're older too. I think when you're yeah. 16, 17 yeah, and you true. have all the success, you feel like you have a, at least another three, four years to make the yeah. jump or to evolve your game. I think when you're 20, 25, it's probably already harder to make too many yeah. changes. I think, yeah, the younger you are, the easier it is to adjust your game or to work on things. I mean, even like players, you know, like Nadal or Federer, they constantly evolve their game or even Lendl, you know, they try to adjust their game to the situation. And, and you also have to grow with the game and like I said, the material, but I think yeah, the, the minute you stop, you lose. I mean, you only you, yeah. you, you go more backwards than forward again. I mean, you can't stop learning. So uh, you are saying that you didn't feel any pressure? Well, in a way, I felt like because I trained hard enough to I at least had a certain standard. If I lost to somebody, you know, who was obviously behind me, then it was more like what did we do wrong in the preparation it was not like unless you play a Williams sister there yeah. or um, Davenport or Jennifer Capriati of course those matches was like 50 50 you know you go into match you don't know what's going to happen yeah. but up until there which was in the quarters or semi-finals I felt like okay it was more like a mistake that we did in the preparation and if I lose to a Williams in the semi-finals or finals then you know then yeah. <laughs> that, that can happen <laughs> I mean it's, yeah, yeah we try next time again and be better your mother was also your coach yeah. now as not just an accomplished player but also as a wise experienced adult what do you think about it was it right and is it right when parents are also coaches well in my case definitely it was right because she was a player herself she was a professional and uh, she taught me the game and I think because she was a mother and also knowing the game um, I would not not be there without her and uh, she yeah. also constantly she was learning and also trying to learn from others like we also not saying experimented but we went to different places to try to learn if somebody was doing something else and maybe better but then you realize okay people are doing either the same thing or we're doing it better I mean that's why I think it's a constant learning process she was not stubborn about not learning something from other people because I mean uh, I spoke to Dinara and mm. Marat and they're saying that it's uh, completely wrong that mother must be a mother not a coach well everybody sees it differently yeah. I think in my case was perfectly fine because also she was a mother a friend and a coach I mean of course it's for her probably not always easy to be tough and hard yeah uh, because she says like as a coach I knew I had to be uh, you had to to, uh, teach you the discipline and yeah. to try to be correct but as a, as a mother I felt like okay sometimes you know you just want to give yeah. you a hug and <laughs> just give the love but I think we were able to mix it quite well I mean otherwise we wouldn't have had the success but I mean even Marat's and Dinara's mother she had two number ones in the world what else yeah. can you do I mean you have two kids two number ones so I don't I don't think she did too much wrong yeah that's true. I would not agree so much but maybe she was too strict on them or yeah I don't know, but I maybe felt they that wanted to feel some love or but I, I felt that sometimes too yeah you were too strict but that's normal I think it's in every family if they push you to do 
play hockey or do soccer yeah. or go in the music school or in school in general I think the parents they always want the best for their children sometimes yeah you don't always agree you have um, disagreements that but that's only normal I think it happens in the best families <laughs> yeah that's true living tennis in 2002 was it more because of tiredness from everything or injuries um, well I had a couple injuries which was not easy to the second one was a little because I had two of them, like both ankles, and the second I just didn't recover as fast as I wanted to, and I lost some matches that I was scared to, to move, and at this level you can't do it. But I lost to uh, players like Dementieva, Miskina, yeah. and uh, Petrova, who all next year yeah, yeah, yeah. they were either yeah. finalists or uh, Grand Slam champions yeah, and number two yeah. in the world. So, <laughs> so I'm like, mm, okay, that was new, new generation a little bit as well. And um, yeah, it was overwhelming. But then, yeah, like I said, it, I had a break and probably also first to put the body and the mind together and um, at 25 I tried again and um, it was still pretty successful so I'm proud of that. <laughs> Why do you think actually injuries happens? Well I think because okay I started at 14 and I was five six years really at the top of the game yeah. so we, to play week in week out is not always easy and you know to play the best of the best I mean sometimes like I said we were just talking about it earlier when you're number 25, 30, you almost don't get into the tournaments. So the top 20 was really, really strong. Uh, sometimes you had to play qualifying yeah. when you were 22 in the rankings and yeah, you're like, yeah. oh my God, you know, it's like really. I remember Kremlin Cup, actually. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And it was not easy. Like you had to be like, and stay there it was even more difficult because everybody tried to beat you. <laughs> yeah. And um, I think, yeah, at that time definitely was, uh, not the easiest time but it was also very very intense those five six years on the tour and sometimes you're like woof you know you, you probably needed to take a break did you enjoy those three years off how was it knowing that you don't need to wake up early to go to the court every day did you miss it i guess in the beginning not at all <laughs> <laughs> it was more of a relief because you obviously didn't feel the pressure of having to wake up and having to go to the tennis court but after a while I start missing it otherwise I wouldn't probably come back definitely 2005 is the year when you decided to come back on tour how did you come to this decision well I missed the game I, I felt like okay at 25 it's either now or never I mean my I'm, I'm not gonna get younger I'm not 17 anymore either I try it now or the train passes very fast you know like you see people that they try and they never make it anymore yeah. even they've been out for six months a year it's very difficult to find the routine again and uh, just it constantly the, the sport moves on and um, I think if I didn't try then then I would have those regrets for the rest of my life so that's why I wanted to try again was it scary Yes, definitely. I was more scared to not have the success. Yeah, that's what, that's, yeah, that's uh, what I'm I saying. Mean, because you have the brand like yeah, Martina Hingis, uh, yeah, pass number, number one, one, and yeah. then you go and you, oh, I didn't want to lose. I yeah. didn't want to blame myself, of course, going on court and not being able to um, protect like my, my image in a way. Yeah, of course, it was um, not easy to go out there and take that decision. And your, your first match in Thailand? Yeah, but that was a year before. Yeah, and kind yeah. of the real comeback was 2006. Yeah, yeah. it's 2005. I mean, yeah, it, but it then didn't I stop didn't play you. for a year. Yeah, but it didn't stop you. Yeah, but I, that was only one match, and then 2000 because I only practiced for two weeks prior oh, okay. to this. But that was for a charity event. Oh, okay. So that was not real. Th yeah. That was not the real try. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, because then I play, practiced real um, November, December before I made that comeback in 2006. Mm -hmm. But that was a real, yeah. because I always did well in Australia and I felt like, okay, this will be a good start. chance, good start, because everybody is re still rusty, maybe coming yeah. off the, the season off and uh, like trying to play the first matches and everybody is in the same position. <laughs> yeah. Martina, was it hard to start again from the bottom and did you feel the difference game-wise? Has it become more about fitness? Well, I think fitness was always already the factor because I played the Williams sisters, I played Jennifer, I played Mary Pierce, um, so they were all pretty fit players. Yeah, but, but I mean, nowadays, if you uh, if you look, everyone, not everyone, but top like say, yeah, definitely top they're 30, fit, but I don't they're think they're traveling with a fitness coach all the time. 
Yeah, but you don't have that much time. It's more the maintenance. But we always do the maintenance. Yeah, you have the time in November, December where you train and then you just maintain your body to have somebody there to yeah. encourage you, to help you, yeah. to so you don't have to do it by yourself. But you can't do that much weight training or during the tournament or during the events because you can't be sore and you can't have sore muscles if you have to play a match next day. So it's more really like we always did that in the past anyway. So, I mean, I used to do most of the stuff with my mother or then wherever you could do things with somebody or even with my doubles partner we, we went for hikes or for jogs or um, rollerblading mountain biking we did it all in the kind of wild in the nature it was different type of training yes but was it hard to start from the bottom i mean mentally that you're martina hingis you were always well i was lucky enough and to you're coming like yeah but i was lucky enough to have wild cards so yeah. already with that i had three four wild cards to even get into the tournaments which was nice um the first one i did semi-finals yeah. straight away and then yeah the, the one in sydney was quite funny because i had to play justine hennen in the first round yeah. and she ended up winning the tournament yeah, so that's i was what like I was saying mm. yeah when I you're was not like, yeah. it. Yeah, of course it's tough, but actually if you beat some of those players in the yeah. first or second round, then it opens up for yeah. you. So it was the same in the Australian Open then. I was supposed to play Mary Pierce in the second round. She was the one who was seated yeah. and she lost in the first. So I was <laughs> like, oof, I was a little bit lucky maybe. Yeah. And then I had to play Beneshova who beat mm -hmm. her. And um, yeah, so I think sometimes you just have to also earn your luck and try to do, try to do your best. And if it works out great if it doesn't then try again do you miss playing singles now sometimes i mean when it's beautiful grass out here and nice day you watch uh, the center court or court one of course i i miss those times when i was out there and playing but i know what it takes how much work it takes yeah. to actually get yourself in shape and to be in this position to be able to play on that court so yes and no <laughs> because i don't miss the suffering to to do the all the workouts the gym work what i did in the past that i don't do as much for the doubles now anymore which is nice <laughs> so how much it takes for a single yeah ah, to for be singles, a single yeah i, I used to like work out like four tennis was four hours a day plus um let's say an hour of hour and a half fitness depends on what you do and yeah then it's also every day yeah six days a week pretty much <laughs> four hours of tennis yes but when i was a kid i even played more five six hours sometimes there was not even a break you know like and i was like hey you gotta eat something sometimes <laughs> but it was not forced it was more like we were also four on the court and we had fun we played doubles it wasn't always as physical as you think like yeah now you have to drill cross court and down the lines and run and all this it was also more fun which i sometimes miss in the game today because people just always play with their coach or their hitting partner before we played together and the girls you know like uh, even junior sometimes you just um, just for fun you just go out there and hit and play some points play some doubles or even with the boys back in the day you know but I think before women's tennis were more friendly no to each other I don't know I mean it always has stages I guess um, I think there's definitely people or groups who talk together and they're friendly and then there's people who are more in their own corner and like to be for themselves. I think uh, it depends. The personality, we're all different. <laughs> yeah. Martina, I'm not sure how it is in Europe or USA, but in Russia, people think that if you're a tennis player, you're rich. Can you please tell us how much it costs to have a team per year? Honestly, I never really asked that question. Um, <laughs> around, I mean. I don't know. I mean, it's also if you probably if you're number one it also time is money right so yeah. you also spend a lot more because you want to keep that position so I was lucky enough to have my mom so she was <laughs> I'm not saying it was a very expensive coach but still I felt like the, the money stays in the yeah. family <laughs> so um, I, I don't know I probably probably I was in a different situation with having my mom as a coach but uh, also the flights and the hotels and all of that it's not for free so yeah not all the time and um yeah it's not like a team player let's say soccer or that hockey. everything is organized yeah. for yeah. you no yeah. i i definitely probably on the flights is already 150 200 thousand um and the coach itself probably it's another 
time like that. So you definitely have to, or if it's a really good coach. Yeah. I mean, it def depends. And then you also, the better you play, obviously you yeah. give bonus. Yeah. Because so it's also nice. In the to end, re top 100 is eating bread and drinking water. I think in Switzerland, if also you live in Switzerland, you have to at least be top 10 to have a life after or to build a life afterwards. Yeah. I think if I was like I was born in Czech Republic, then you convert the dollar into the Czech yeah, crown is a different story yeah, as well. Then is so cheap you are to. more of a millionaire, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, much easier yeah. to because, um, yeah, it depends what country also it's a different lifestyle and where you come from, how they treat you and how much money you have. I think it's not the same well, depending if you're, yeah, definitely from the Western or Eastern countries. Yeah. Do you think it's important to have a good coach? I think it's very in important. Percentage wise, let's say how much it takes. Well, in, in my case, I feel, felt like my mom made me. So it was definitely 50 50. And that's how we always work together. I think maybe in other cases it's um, 70, 30, 80, 20, I don't know, but I think it's a big part of, of the game as well to, to do the right things that the coach understands the player and, and works on the strength and also on the weaknesses and to be able to bring the best out of the coach, uh, out of the player, yeah, yeah. because I did th that part as well and I really enjoyed that, but it's, uh, it's sometimes it was surprisingly more the mental part that you have to be really good than yeah, always exactly. the tennis yeah. and uh, because yeah it's it's a long time that you spend time on the tour you spend together 35 40 weeks in the year you travel and you have a lots of ups and downs and that's more emotional and not even has nothing to do with tennis sometimes did you enjoy being a coach yes i did yeah, yeah because i mean you had obviously great moments when you win and then yeah. you have the lows when you lose but i think the players that I helped out uh, most of the time, they were successful. So yeah, I, that's what that's I'm saying. Like you enjoy that. She was playing really she good. She did really well. Yeah. No, definitely. I mean, uh, she won the tournament during that time. She won the doubles as well. Yeah. And uh, um, I always uh, maintain a great relationship with her. So it's um, no, definitely we had great moments. Yeah. <laughs> Is it a privilege to be a pro tennis player or more of a sacrifice? I think if you consider yourself compared to other people, in my, I would never want to change. Yeah. <laughs> I think I, I had, don't have any regrets. We, I don't think you should have because, yeah, you make mistakes. You try to learn and try to get better. But I think we're very fortunate to have a life that we have, to be able to travel, to make friends around the world, to, to earn the money we do. I think uh, it's amazing the, the life that we are able to live. Yeah. Martina, why do you think the popularity of women's tennis went down? Generational change or wrong management? Oh, I'm not a business director, so <laughs> I think this is not a question that I can answer. I mean, I think I, I hope I did a little bit of part of me to try to get the women's game up there or you always have the, to move the chapter on to the next generation. I, I was as four years number one. I think I did a little bit better of that and yeah, uh, I was playing with the Onyx racket yeah actually, because of <laughs> when you played and when you stopped first time I changed to Wilson oh <laughs> yeah <laughs> okay well it's uh, it's hard to say but this is there are people for that to do the right management and uh, to try to get the uh, women's game out there and, and sell it and um, that's other people's job it's not mine <laughs> yeah but I mean before it was you and Anna and a lot of players well, it's more you know? colorful I yeah say. and, and now it's, it's like, uh, Serena also and Maria yeah and it's exchangeable playing, because yeah I think hard. sometimes it's hard because the players are not consistent enough if you have the players who are in the top 10 yeah. and all the time not moving in and out or not just winning like five times a year I think if you have more continuous success with the players, then it's also easier for people to keep the names and keep the, the faces. Yeah. Uh, I recently watched a lot of your matches on YouTube. You're so calm, confident. You show so much grace on court. Is it your Thank Swiss you. <laughs> passport or you worked uh, with your mental skills? I never really worked on my mental skills, but I always believed in the preparation like if i work hard i have no fear to go on the court because i can only do the best that i try to do before once you're on the court it's too late anyway to change anything so i always believe in my skills and i think uh, 
most of the time I prepare myself to be in the best position and if somebody beat me too good shake hands and congratulations but I was yeah I guess lucky enough that it didn't happen all the time I had more success than yeah, but not, I mean, Roger but is also like that you know yeah but I think we try to do our, the best to get ourselves in the best possible position and if somebody's better then we at least we know we tried everything that we have to to not lose the matches that we do but uh, it sometimes it happens it's normal and uh, it's human but uh, still in the big events I think we still always were well prepared and I think that's the best shot you can give yourself you can't do more than that <laughs> um, what is your biggest victory well there is a lot of great memories I think one of the biggest is probably when I won my first event in Filderstad, when I won the port as a 16 year old, yeah. obviously, then becoming number one in the world when I won my first Grand Slam. And one of the ones that was like when I bu probably beat Venus and Serena back to back because that didn't happen <laughs> very often. <laughs> it's like yeah. one day one and the next day the other. I mean, I was like, oof. <laughs> it's like usually it happens you beat one and then you lose to the next one because it's just too tough. Yeah, that's hard mix. <laughs> In 2013 was your second comeback, this time as a doubles player. It's so unusual when a top singles player who get uh, all the glory is coming back on tour as a doubles player. What do you think? Well, because I, I think in the first career, nobody really knows this, but I already won nine Grand Slams in doubles, which I had almost double yeah, as I much as in with the... Yeah, I remember also. Yes, I was couple of them. In so, I think that just went unnoticed. And um, people, oh, she actually won already nine Grand Slams, <laughs> even like yeah. while playing singles. So, I think I was always a much better doubles player than I was actually a <laughs> singles player. I always say that. But I think... Um, yeah, so I could always call that back and those memories which I had. And I think it's also important to work on the partnership because it's like a relationship. Yeah, I mean, exactly. It's a, a lot of the times you spend a lot of time yeah. together, you work together, you practice together. Uh, unfortunately, before we had to sometimes play against each other, which is not always easy yeah. because in a way you warm up together and then uh, in the singles it's not, not nice having to play each other, whether I was playing with Anna or um, Jana Novotna or Mary Pierce or whoever I was partnering and then actually you become opponents. That's the downside of that. But uh, most of the time I think we th those I always call a couple of my best years on the tour when we played with Anna Kornikova. So those were really nice memories. And be it was beautiful. I mean, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <look at> you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> yeah, we definitely had the crowds on our side. Yeah, uh, the the yeah. support was there. Yes. <laughs> uh, if you had a chance to start all over again, knowing the price of success, would you go for for another circle? If I would all do all of this again, yeah, yeah, so of course. I mean, I I would try to even do things better than I did in my yeah. previous time. <laughs> <laughs> what no, would you change? Well, I think probably to, if I could, might maybe pl replay a couple of those matches. Yeah, especially the '99 French Open. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> maybe just not get too excited about the crowd, which yeah. I didn't understand at that time. And you're 17, 18, you're like, what the? Heck? <laughs> but um, and yeah, maybe one of the Australian Opens that I lost from match point as well. But okay, things like this. That's the drama of tennis. Yeah. But um, today I can laugh about it. <laughs> My last question, any recommendations from Martina Hingis to young players and their parents? Maybe especially for parents. Parents you know, more. Than <laughs> <laughs> no, I think the, just always um, believe that actually you can do it that, and, and enjoy what you do. I think that's the biggest secret. I mean, even in the days you have to go to school, you don't enjoy, but try to do the maximum out of it. And um, yeah, the, it, it will eventually it will happen. It, you have to earn your luck. I mean, you have to keep trying to work on it and it will come. I always believe in that. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> and good luck this week. And the second week. <laughs> Thank you, hopefully.